Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I'm going to be showing you how we can create a very simple TypeScript file and compile it into common JavaScript using a tool called Webpack. So before we get started with this tutorial, if you haven't already, you should install a program called NPM. It's a package manager for JavaScript and as far as I know, probably the most popular one out there. So uh, you use NPM and you install all of your dependencies for a project. In this case, we're going to need three dependencies, which is TypeScript, Webpack, and TS Loader, or TS-Loader. You can see all of those over here um, in the previous instance of basically this tutorial. Uh, I have those three dependencies here. And before we get started uh, with adding those dependencies, the first thing we should do in a new project is to do an npm init, uh, assuming you're going to be using npm as your package manager. This will allow you to set up some basics about your uh, project, such as the name, uh, what version you're on, blah, blah, blah. Um, and actually, when you do an npm init, you can pretty much just hit enter for all of these. I'm just going to you know, keep going through this. It doesn't really matter. Um, and we'll, yeah, just go ahead and hit yes. And what that's going to do is it's going to create package.json. Um, so this is what it will look like initially. And we've got to get those dependencies in. Um, so let's see here. In order to add the dependencies, we, of course, use npm. So a new command is going to be npm install. And I'll have these commands in the description as well. And it's going to be uh, double dash save dev, which means we're saving it as a development dependency, which means whenever you're developing your code, it's something that you need in order for everything to work right. Uh, and we're going to be adding in TS loader. Uh, space TypeScript, space Webpack, and we should just add those all at once. Uh, no real reason not to. And this will just take a minute. It'll basically go online, uh, grab the packages, download them, install them, and save it as a dev dependency. So if you were to take uh, basically this project, um, let's say into a Git repository, you don't actually need to bring along all of the dependencies and the code behind there. Uh, you can just bring this package JSON file in, and then uh, you would do an npm install command in order to basically make sure all the dependencies are installed. So whatever is listed as a dev dependency over here, if you do npm install, it'll go ahead and grab those no matter what machine you're on. Um, okay, so it looks like our packages are just about loaded. Um, so we have Webpack, we have TypeScript, and we have TS Loader. So in order to get TypeScript uh, and Webpack to work, um, TypeScript config, basically setting up how TypeScript is going to work on uh, our project, and then Webpack, the main purpose there is to compile the TypeScript code into JavaScript. We're going to need to create two files. So that's going to be tsconfig, so tsconfig, all right, config.json, and one more, which is going to be webpack.config.js, and these should go in the root folder of your project. So we'll start with tsconfig over here, and I'm basically going to go through these options that I have set up on the right and put them over here on the left. So it's a JSON file, so of course we add in those brackets. Um, so compiler options. Uh, as you create a more complicated project, you would have a lot more options there. Uh, but for right now, the only thing you actually need is module common JS, which is basically meaning when we take the TypeScript, we're going to be compiling it down to common JS. So that's why we want to add the module there. So the next line source map is set to true. I'm going to skip over that for right now because that's going to be the next video here on my channel. Uh, where I talk about how to debug with TypeScript. So what we actually need here is include, and then we need to include TypeScript files. Um, alternatively, you could set files, and then you could just specify the file, the specific files that you want to compile down. So that could just be index.ts here. Uh, of course, it's a string, so index. TS, but I'm just going to grab all of the TypeScript files and include that in my final output. So the next thing we need to include in TSConfig as uh, more of just a good practice 
is exclude node modules. So the reason we would do this is node modules is the folder where basically all of your dependencies and the dependencies of those dependencies, basically all the stuff that needs to be included in your project that isn't actually the code you wrote is included there. And as we add um, basically compiler options to TS Convic uh, to make sure that it's checking for certain things like no variables that are just set to be any where we want in TypeScript variables to be set to specific types. Um, we don't check for stuff like that in node modules because that's already compiled code and we don't really want to be caring about that. We just expect it to work out of the box, generally speaking. Um, so we exclude that. Now we need to move on to another file called webconfig.js. Uh, so in webconfig.js, we want to set up module exports equals, and then uh, we've got to set a bunch of settings inside there, starting with entry. And this is going to be the entry point for uh, where Webpack is going to look when it starts compiling uh, basically code and possibly multiple files together into our output which is the next variable we're about to set. So in this case, we have one file in our project and that's basically the starting point, the entry point for our code, for our server, whatever we happen to be writing. So we're gonna set that as the entry point there. Note one dot for representing the current directory and then slash index.ts. Um, next we need to set output. So here I'm just gonna make it really simple and we're gonna output it to bundle.js. So that means when we compile this code uh, that's in index.ts and whatever else it finds beyond there, it's gonna pop it into bundle.js. And we call it bundle.js uh, just to kind of imply that it's taking all of the code and compiling it into one file if we happen to have multiple files. Um, so next we need to do resolve. And what this is basically telling Webpack is what extensions does it need to care about? And currently, the two we care about are TS for TypeScript and JS for JavaScript. Um, everything else we can just kind of ignore at the moment. Uh, and then finally, modules, or just module rather. Um, inside of module, we need to set a loader, and we only have one loader in this case because we're only trying to compile TypeScript code. Uh, you may also include stuff like Babel later on if you need extra functionality in your JavaScript. And we're going to test for a regular expression, which is going to look like this. And then comma, loaders. And we're going to use the loader that we downloaded with NPM at the start of the video, which is TS or TypeScript loader. So basically, uh, our TypeScript code is going to get passed through TypeScript loader, and it's going to be output with Webpack as bundle.js which is pretty much what we're looking for there. Um, and all these simple files, I'm gonna include them as a simple package uh, or a download link for you guys. Um, but what I would suggest you do is if you are looking to get a really quick start in TypeScript and Webpack, you should take a look at uh, some of the templates that exist online because there's a lot of them and you can just download them. You won't have to configure Webpack yourself or TS config, um, and you can get going a lot faster. But uh, now that we actually have this written, we can uh, do a webpack command. So first I'm going to delete this bundle.js file from uh, basically my folder because I want to prove that webpack is actually working. And I've gone ahead and written the simplest of code inside of index.ts. So just a function here uh, written as TypeScript. So you can see declaring a type here, name as a parameter is set to string, which means TypeScript is going to expect a string and it's going to basically give us an error uh, if we try to pass anything that doesn't, uh, anything that's not a string, to keep it simple. Um, and in theory, if you ran this file, it would output uh, the function hello with the parameter John. So what we actually care about in this video though is taking this file and uh, compiling it. So because we have webpack config.js configured and tsconfig.json configured, 
All we need to do is type in Webpack, and that's going to run Webpack with the configuration settings over here um, and compile it into the file, which is bundle.js. So this should take uh, essentially a few seconds here, and if everything goes right, it's going to output as one file, which is bundle.js. Um, so we pop this open here, and uh, of course you can see that the code doesn't look exactly like it does in uh, TypeScript because they add a bunch of extra stuff in to make it actually work, um, which is one reason why in the next video we're going to be talking about how to debug your TypeScript code. So you set your, type, your uh, debug points in TypeScript uh, because that's the code as you wrote it, which is going to make it much, much easier to debug. But here if we scroll down on bundle.js, you can see that it is in fact including the function we wrote in TypeScript, which is this hello and you know console log hello John. So it's successfully taking um, all of the functions and code out of our entry point, and it's populating that into bundle.js. So that's exactly what we're looking for, um, and that's going to be pretty much it for this video. So if you want to know how to uh, actually debug your TypeScript files. So being able to set breakpoints here and while your process is running to successfully attach a debugger there, uh, that's going to be the next video. But until then, I've been Chris. Thanks for watching and I will see you guys in my future video content.